Unpacking South Africa's Budget 2023, all you need to know in 20 minutes. Good afternoon, everyone. So we'll just wait for a couple of minutes for more people to join in. And I'll take this opportunity maybe to introduce myself. My name is Bobby. I have recently joined uh, Regan Van Roy. So before joining Regan Van Roy, I was working for the authorities for big four firms. And uh, I've also worked for a media firm where I was a partner. You can see Lance now joining us. So I will introduce Lance before he can start his presentation. So Lance is uh, the SA Tax Partner for Regan Van Roy. He is a, a, a corporate and international tax specialist with an m and focus. He is ex Big Four as well. And before joining Regan Van Roy, uh, he was a partner at Cliff Decker. So Lance, over to you for your presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Um, hi, all. Um, yeah, I've just um, um, joined Regan Van Roy to um, head up the South African team and very excited to be here and to work with uh, Bobby and the rest of the team uh, um, across border. And welcome to all, to all our clients. Um, Bobby, I, I'm not so sure I, I have a presentation as such um, because I don't want to bore people. <laughs> um, I'm sure um, and I hope that there are lots of questions uh, by, by the participants. Um, you know, I think other than to say, I mean, we live in a really interesting time in, in South Africa um, where in the aftermath of the budget speech um, we had one of the most explosive interviews possibly ever since our uh, democracy um, you know since the dawn of our democracy um, and, and, and the fallout from from that has been immense and then of course on Friday we had um, the widely expected greatest in of, of South Africa um, and it will be useful, I think, for for us and certainly for all those with South African interests on the on the, on the call to hear from you, Bobby, what your experience was um, when this happened in Mauritius not not that long ago. Sure. Um, so yeah, maybe we can circle back to that. Um, I think shall we shall we jump into the budget speech, Bobby? Yes, Lance. Please go ahead. In a nutshell, it was um, um, very fortunate for us um, as for South Africa that the commodity prices globally, um, you know, continued to um, increase. Um, that had a massive effect on tax collections, corporate tax collections in, in particular, um, were significantly higher than budgeted. Um, you know, but that that is obviously not and necessarily going to be a permanent thing. So um, one has to take that in context, I think. Um, and then also it was quite um, a relief to see that personal taxes collections had also recovered quite well um, and were also in ahead of budget. Um, and then that came in um, sort of just on budget, maybe one or two percent below budget. So for the year concerned, um, the South African fiscus will um, will have a small surplus, you know, which which is a real blessing in this um, because you know the, the, there's a lot of a lot of tax um, needed to you know pay off debt. We've seen um, the minister announced last week that government will be taking on a huge portion of ESCOM's debt, which comes with a lot of requirements. For ESCOM, which I think is promising, the, there was an article that Stephen Curtis wrote over the, over the weekend to say that um, you know, by all means, ESCOM will be involved in transmitting electricity, but it's it's really not allowed to invest in in electricity um, generating projects going forward. And so we'll see the private sector coming on board. You know, um, and and maybe that's a good thing. Well, I think that is certainly a good thing. So, well, you know, well, I mean, uh, you know, a, a good story around um, collections and and around proposals for the year ahead. There's a focus on you know on building renewable energy capacity, not not only for private businesses but also for households. We've seen the quite unique introduction of a rebate for households that 
invest in in rooftop solar. So yeah, it, 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 it's been it's been it's been welcoming from that respect. Um, but then on the corporate tax side, there hasn't um, been you know not not much to talk about in terms of meaningful incentives, in, in my humble opinion. What were your um, thoughts on on the budget from a Mauritian perspective, Bobby? I mean, uh, the budget would be soon be presented in Mauritius Arabic in June, but um, when we can see, for example, the rooftop, you know, uh, incentives for tax purposes, this was been produced sometime uh, back in Mauritius, where people can claim this deduction in their tax return. So you were mentioning earlier, uh, lands that uh, Mauritius went through that grey list. So it's not like winning the Champions League where, you know, we've been there and it's something that you can celebrate. We went through that process in 2018 and, uh, you know, uh, Mauritius was delisted. So the beneficial uh, ownership information related to legal person and legal arrangements was uh, in concern and the processes for identifying and confiscating the proceeds of crime. So in 2019, uh, Mauritius agreed to implement uh, an action plan regarding the supervision of global business. Uh, access to beneficial ownership, demonstrate that authorities can conduct uh, money laundering investigations, implement risk-based approach for non-profit organization, and demonstrate the implementation of financial uh, sections. Uh, the implications are two main implications, I would say, with that gray list. So the, the increased procedures in terms of payment by banks, and uh, movements were found in terms of uh, domiciling by certain clients. Obviously, not all the uh, clients. And then Mauritius was removed in October uh, 2021 from that list, including the uh, European blacklist. So here we are in terms of, of the uh, grey list. So uh, you can comment uh, what would be uh, like the uh, how did the comments of the press and the finance people, uh, given that it has now been grey listed? Well, I mean, I guess it 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 remains to be seen what the impact will be um, on South Africa. Um, I mean, no doubt there will be a negative impact. Closing and out of the country will be um, will be scrutinised um, more closely. But you know, I think the hope is is that we won't be in this situation for for very long um, i think it took mauritius two years um to, to get out of to, to get out of the gray listing and, and i think malta had also been gray listed and then it took malta less than a year to to get out of it the one sort of aspect of of the regime in in, in south africa that that is let's say above board <laughs> is the national treasury um you know and, and, and there there are a lot of good people in in national treasury um who i know are working very hard to you know to get us out of this um, so hopefully not 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 more than a year bobby that we all um be impacted by the by the gray listing you know the the economy here really needs um a lot of um, foreign investment to you know, create jobs, to um, help with our you know help with our currency, with the exchange rate, um, and um, the unfortunate the unfortunate thing from as a tax consultant that that um, that I think you know where we missing a trick is that we're not using tax policy effectively. Some would say at all really to create employment. Um, you know, and I suppose the, the government has had bigger issues, um, you know, but, but employment is, unemployment, I should say, is a huge problem in this country. And um, we could use tax policy far more effectively to, to, to generate foreign investment and to, you know, ultimately increase um, the, the amount of people employed. For example, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of, you know, quite a simple tax holiday program where any investment into the country is is only um, is, is, is to the extent it creates jobs, 
gives one a tax holiday. Um, so if you're coming into the country and let's take Amazon, for example, the amount of jobs being created, they, they could get, you know, 10, 12 year tax holiday, call it. Um, one sees that in other developing countries and it, it works quite effectively. Um, because at the end of the day, as a company coming in, you're not paying corporate tax to to the fiscus, but you're paying a lot of people a salary, you know, and that salary in turn buys goods, pays for fuel, pays for transport. Um, so there's a lot of indirect taxes that the fiscus gets as a, as a result of, you know, people simply being paid a salary. Um, but such simple measures to effectively use tax policy are just nowhere on, on the table, unfortunately. Okay, so next thing, uh, Lance, uh, is there anything in terms of um, um, exchange control in the last budget? So is there any update? Has there been any changes? No, nothing meaningful other than to note that, that there will be some formalization around cryptocurrency. So that affects um, a few who deal in cryptocurrency. Um, other than that, unfortunately not, um, which we, we all know or may know that we have the, unquestion the uncertainty around loop structures and whether one needs approval, whether one doesn't need approval. Um, unfortunately, there's been no further clarity on, on, the, on those loop structures. So we see in practice that, you know, it really the banks are, as has always been the case with XCOM, the banks simply do different things. Um, some are more stringent, some are more relaxed. So yeah, unfortunately, nothing on nothing on XCON. One interesting proposal um, that will affect cross-border, you know, structures, particularly with, with offshore trusts, et cetera, et cetera, is the use of foreign denominated loans um, where a person could use a foreign denominated loan that bears a low interest to then charge that low interest um, for purposes of, of the deemed a nation rule. And um, it's useful to note that that's, that's going to be um, looked at. So we may find that, that, that some anti-avoidance around um, those types of loans be introduced, um, you know, which, which could then be adverse or, or, or lead to adverse tax consequences. Um, for those affected South African taxpayers. We've also seen a, a proposal to uh, further limit the deductibility of interest paid um, cross-border, which is also a big concern. Yeah, so uh, in Mauritius, uh, as you are aware, there has been a change in terms of uh, the resident of trust. And uh, maybe for information for this group, uh, have been making some research since last week and uh, the statement of practice that normally should be appearing on the website of the MRA has disappeared. So this might be uh, interpreted as that there are some changes being brought on because there are inconsistencies in terms of the uh, definition of residence and the statement of practice. So I guess uh, that there might be some changes to be uh, brought in uh, very soon. Uh, Lance, next question on the uh, SA budget. Uh, have there been changes uh, regarding the practice notes 31 and 37? So there was a proposal to um, remove those practice notes. Um, and I know we addressed that in a newsletter at the back end of, of last year. Thankfully, the, they've come to their census and they won't remove either of those practice notes until they bring in um, some form of legislation that, that provides relief. Um, and that's particularly welcome, um, you know, on practice at 31, which allows one to claim an interest deduction, for example, where you where you simply unlend, you know, if you're a conduit. Um, and that, that affects a lot of holding companies in, in the country where funds come in from abroad and, and are simply unlend to a subsidiary. Um, one, you know, there's a valid commercial arrangement. So thankfully, no, nothing will happen imminently. And when something does happen, the expectation is that appropriate um, legislation will simultaneously be introduced to 
um, to cover um, valid commercial arrangements. Bobby, I, I wonder if we should take some questions from the uh, from, from the audience side. Yes, so we've provided 20 minutes for this session, uh, 15 minutes are already gone. So uh, we're opening the platform now for questions from the audience. So anyone would like to uh, shoot a question, please feel free to raise a hand or we'll open the mic for you. So I see there's a question there for you, Bobby, around the incentive for solar panels in, in Mauritius. A lot of South Africans looking at buying property in Mauritius. Thank you, Lance. So it mentions uh, uh, the solar panel, but not in details in terms of battery and inverters. So we can communicate on that uh, maybe at a later stage just to see, uh, you know, the details. But it mentions only solar panels for the time being. Yeah, the South African incentive is is on solar panels as well um, for households, which is a is a small component or small part of the total cost of these systems. Generally. For example, in Mauritius, you will have fast charger for electric cars. So there are more details in terms of the, uh, I would say, the green uh, technology. Any questions from the uh, audience, please? While we wait for questions, Bobby, it's going to be interesting to note, um, because um, some may or may not know, um, that you, you, there will soon be a change in infrastructure. The legislation is already there that will allow households to sell electricity back onto the grid. Um, the budget, the, the minister was, was silent on how, how that will be treated from a tax perspective. Um, will the electricity, will that income be taxable? Will there be compliance um, obligations? Um, that's something for ourselves to think about. Yeah, so I could see a question. Uh, so did, it's addressed to me how did you mean residency or Mauritian trusts? There will be changes around that. No, what I was saying is that uh, suddenly the statement of practice has been revealed from the Inwari website. And obviously, when uh, such an important statement of practice disappears from this website, so the questions that we are asking ourselves that there might be changes in the SOP itself, and to what extent these changes would affect the residency of trust. So, I would prefer to remain on the fact that the uh, SOP is no longer on the website on the MRA, and this means possibly changes in the near future. Um, I see two questions there for me, Bobby. So the first one from Russell, thanks for that. The, um, you know, other than the incentives for renewable energy, to so the, 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 there's 125% allowance for, for businesses to invest in renewable energy and then there's also the rebate for households of, of up to 15k per annum uh, over a two-year period um, and that's really all um, that the minister introduced um, the problem with the big large-scale renewable energy projects you know also remains one of access to the grid you know so there, there, there is unfortunately a lot of infrastructure that, uh, that needs to be developed before we will get out of this mess. And then the second question around impacting the exit process, um, the only thing that springs to mind was the proposal to apportion the um, the tax-free, your, 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 your contribution to tax-free savings accounts. Last year, the, I think last year or the year before, they the, the had already limited the the rebate and the and the annual CGT exclusion, so you have to apportion it for part of the year that that you are resident and the part that you aren't resident. If I may get back to the question of solar, and so if you if we go to the definition of solar energy unit, so it in includes a solar inverter as well, battery for storage of electricity, and solar charge uh, controller. I think that that precision was was required. Uh, any other questions from the audience, please? Uh, we've, we are just in the 20 minutes, but uh, we would welcome a few more questions from the audience. It was um, useful to note that, that there were no, uh, there were really no increases in taxes as such, other than the, the normal increases to sin taxes, etc. 
Okay, so I can't see any more uh, questions. So I will take this opportunity to thank, uh, first of all, Lance for the info regarding the essay budget and all the person attendees uh, regarding this webinar. Any other questions that you would like to be addressed, whether from an essay perspective or from a Mauritius perspective, feel free to send us a mail or please feel free to talk with us. Yes, let's hope that um, we have seen the worst in South Africa and that there's only new skies ahead. Thank you, Lance, and thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.